Mick Taylor, ladies and gentlemen. That was awesome. Well, hello. Still not sponsored by Costa Coffee. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to that fellow show. Dan here. Mick here, hello and welcome. We have a couple of new toys in the Shed of Dreams. Um, one being this wonderful Leslie cabinet. This is on loan um, from David over at Vic, the Victoria pub in Swindon, where I did my first ever Tin Spirits gig. Oh really? Yeah, it's awesome. So he's lent us that. Uh, I'd be surprised if he ever gets it back because it yeah. just sounds so good. Sorry, it's not, David, but it's not going to be in this video. Sorry about that, but there, there will be a whole video on it which you can see on our channel. So uh, it's there today so that we don't have to move it more than once because it weighs as much as I was going to say a small person, a large person. Yeah. So yeah. But the uh, the Marshall. It's a 50 watt plexi. It's a 1987X. L. Some people call it L because it's got the, the loop and it's a reissue plexi. We wanted a plexi, so we got one. Um, and a 412 cab. A 412 cab. The real deal. It's the first Rock time I've roll. first time I've had a well, we have had a four well, first time I have had a four by twelve cab in twenty years. Right. I I had that exact cab twenty years ago. And it feels good. Yeah, yeah. It feels good. I went I bought it used, found it on Gumtree, went to uh, near Whitney in Oxfordshire to pick it up. Um Yeah. So hello guys if you're watching. Um and Finally, 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 we've got a Hot Rod Deluxe, Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. Uh, most popular valve amp on the planet, uh, most popular professional valve amp on the planet. Um, everyone uses them, so we thought we would acquire one and uh, use it in more videos. Yes, wonderful. Okay, today we are looking at Tube Screamers Part 2. We did the first uh, video on Tube Screamers and their, you know, all the current lots of boutique things that guys are making and everyone said yeah but you missed out this and that one and that one so we've we've got this one that one and that one yeah nice yeah so we've got a few we have a moor we have the moor green mile that was the one that people asked for the most yeah yeah and it's uh oh actually let's do this here is our the clean sound today between the marshal and the fender <laughs> Again. Whenever I hear that guitar, I can't, I cannot believe the transients it puts out. So when we do our little sound check before we film, I'm like, yeah, go on, hit it down, hit it. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we start filming and he goes, crack and all the meters go off the scale on the thing. It's just an astonishing guitar. It is, it is. And on a side note, on a side note, we're gonna make a vid video called Everything You Know Is Wrong. <laughs> because that Marshall's got one of the best clean sounds. It's crazy, it's crazy. It's so good, anyway, yeah. we'll get into that yeah. some other time. Okay, so, the Moor. Actually, here's what I wanna do. Your Tube Screamer your green tube screamer that was the Keeley Mod 808. I shall employ the finger of, of identification. All right, let's hear that because this is the one for me that all others need to be measured by. In the last shootout, whenever you turn that on, it's like, just, it, it's that sound. Interesting story, that, uh, so this was a Keeley 808 Plus mod, I think. It's not the one that has the true bypass. Right. Because there was also, a, there's a mod, there was a Keeley mod, which had the true bypass. This one doesn't have the true bypass. So it's, he changes out some of the caps and some of the other stuff to make it lower noise floor, a little bit more gain, a little bit more bass and treble. Right. So back when Keeley was predominantly doing mods, that's when I got that. And interestingly, Daniel, I bought that as a birthday present for myself. I bought myself birthday presents as well. Uh, in 2000 and... I want to say four, okay, maybe five. So it's that old, right? And it's my birthday tomorrow. It's in such good condition. It's my birthday. It's your birthday tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Sorry, I completely bypassed that, didn't I? Yeah. It's in... And do you know what I bought myself for my birthday this year? What? A four by twelve cabinet. Rock. Yes. So good. Well, happy birthday, buddy, for Thanks, tomorrow. Buddy. Thank you. Uh, right. Okay. So. Right. So this is. Yeah. I tell you what. You. This is your. Tube Screamer. Okay, shall we hear the, the amps for the strap first? Yep. Mm -hmm. 
I'm in E flat by the way. I've got an E flat gig at the moment, so the guitar. I'm leaving it in E flat because it gets really annoyed if it goes. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> right, you ready? <laughs> That's that sound. Such a good sound. That's amazing. And actually, these amps aren't overdriving that much. No, they're very clean. They're pushing a little bit, but not not a huge amount. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty. We're we're nice and we're not entirely quiet today. No. Let me have a go. Done. That's done. Man. Okay, so we, we have a guest today, GB Bartlett's with us, who you might know, who's a friend of the show, is, uh, has come in to join us for today to uh, hang out, see what happens. Anyway, so he's just handed me this. Um, who actually has one of these? You have one of these, yeah, don't you? Right. Yeah. right, let's see what this sounds like. interesting because what you just heard there is um, exactly the same setup three different guitars and the level of kind of sensitivity mm. within how we've got it set up so the amps are set relatively clean the Marshall's probably just pushing a little bit now with the with the tube screamer hitting it actually the Fender <laughs> will be a little bit as well but not much um, and you've heard that with the Strat it's pretty clean and glassy and with the Tele it, it starts to not wouldn't not actually not compress that much but it gets the throat to it, drivier, it, yeah, yeah. and with this, it's you know, rock you could do a rock gig with that, yeah, definitely. Okay, so that is the tube screamer that all others must be compared by, you know, because that's it's absolutely superb sounding. Okay, let's begin. So, this is the Green Mile by Moore. <laughs> has a lot of that uh, so the way that, the way a tube screamer works it overdrives certain frequencies and leaves others alone you know so so you'll hear that clean guitar through yeah that was there seemed to be more of that in the green mile than there is in in the 808 yeah a little bit more yeah yeah and then uh, when it went crazy there's a hot and a warm switch right 
and the hot switch took it out of tube screamer territory for me or actually maybe towards a different kind of tube screamer but sure. away from the 808 obviously yes there have been millions of different kinds of tube screamers over the years we're interested in the 808 thing today really um sounds good it does it, yeah um no no complaints there loads and loads and loads of high end and treble yeah so the treble's almost off yeah which moment. is unusual could you just play again and i'll just see <laughs> So that might be useful if you had a dark amp. Yeah. Um, some Victory V40s can be a little bit dark. There, obviously, there's lots of amps that can be dark. Mm -hmm. uh, conversely, both of these amps are extremely bright. Yeah. So the Hot Rod Deluxe is, has a huge amount of treble and presence, and so does the Plexi, incredible amount. So that probably explains a little bit why we're right the way down there on the tone control. Yeah. But what's quite nice about that is that you have a wide range of um, uh, adjustment on my 808, for example. Could you stick that one again? Ah, it's so good! <laughs> there's quite a lot of oh. it. There's, there's more adjustment in that tone pot than you would get out of a standard 808, I believe. That's one of the uh, mods that he does. Okay, should we move along? Yep. This is the JHS Moonshine. Cleans up nice. Yeah, you have a go on that, it's awesome. I like that a lot. Yeah. It's got more range of everything. Yes. Is that a diode? It's a switch? gain. It's a gain slash low gain, high gain. The higher gain, it's a little bit more compression. Yeah, I'm gonna say it sounds like it's a different clipping. Yeah. yeah. Cause in what one of the things you get in uh, a lot of Whoa! Whoa, hang on, Tiger! <laughs> what is that? So Mick has some camouflaged <laughs> shoes on. What's going on there? <laughs> All right. That's my other birthday present. <laughs> this I've got a bit of a thing for camo. Got a bit of a thing for camo. But do you know what the best thing about these shoes is? What? Not only are they camo, they're a bit high vis as well. <laughs> when you shine a light can, on them. Or you can see this white outline. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, anyway, sorry about sorry, that. Sorry, we digress. Yeah, Converse, if you want to send us some free shoes, please do. Um, 
Anyway, um, okay. Um, one of the things you get on locked tube screamers is, as you push the gain, it gets more compressed, mm -hmm. and you either like that or you don't. So one of the common mods to tube screamers is to change the way the uh, the clipping happens, yep. so that it can be softer or harder. And it, to me, I don't know. Obviously, there'll be fifty million comments explaining exactly what happens. Mm -hmm. and I could have read the manual, but to me, it sounds like that's what's happening there. Like it's uh, changing the diode, not clipping it so much or something. Sure. Yeah. Because um, it was under the fingers, there was either softer attack and more drive, or kind of mm. much more of that. Mm. Very good though. Very yeah, good. I, I do like that. I do like that a lot. Right. Finally, finally, we have an Earthquaker Devices pedal on the show. This is the Earthquaker Devices Palisades. It's very cool. So we have. I'll get you to play. Um, so. It's broken. <laughs> right, lots of knobs, lots of dials, lots of switches, but it's it's quite simple. We have a voice control here, so if you you play, these are different um, gain options, uh, voicing. Uh, if you think of all the different styles of Tube Screamer, yeah, and how the the shape of them okay. differs. Let's go to the so, next pickup. Volume up to full here. Yeah. Awesome. And now we have the bandwidth, so you can actually change the amount of bandwidth. So, have a play. So you can have a fat sounding tube screamer or a very focused tight bottom end. We haven't touched any of the other knobs yet and already those two knobs solve every problem that anyone ever had with the tube screamer which yep. is, um, for, those, for those of you who don't love tube screamers, there's usually two things you don't like about them. One, the type of gain because it's too compressed. Mm -hmm. And two, the fact that it rolls off a load of bottom end and a load of high end. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Solves both of those problems, Absolutely. doesn't it? Because you can Bang. have it. You can have it any way you like it. Yep. You've got a normal switch and a bright switch. You can turn the buffer off as well. But this is very cool. You have two different gains. You've got gain A, which we're on now, which is a, uh, not cleaner, but it, it's it's a great rhythm gain. It's sort of a bit fatter. Okay. And then you can switch to gain B, which, so we go from gain A. with that.
Everything. Everything. And... And a boost. And a boost! You'll, you, you'll have seen me tweak, tweaking the boost knob there. <laughs> Deliberately trying to make it sound as bad as possible there, just wondering what the boost and the overdrive all the way up would sound like. Right. Unbelievable amount of combinations. It's crazy, isn't and, it? And the boost is cut or boost as well, which yes. is quite interesting. Yeah. So, what I love about this is that you can find a, an amazing core tone, then change the gains for a rhythm or lead thing, and then boost it as well. Mm. Fantastic, and it sounds ace! Just, um, I'm quite interested to hear that with humbuckers, because as the, as the available gain goes up, I mean, I would imagine with this guitar and the, that amount of oomph on tap, mm. you could probably, especially with all that EQ, I bet you could make it sound nothing like a cheap screamer whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hang on, stop, stop, stop one second. All that gain, yeah. listen to how quiet it is. This is without any pedals. That's pretty good. That's great. That's good. Um, obviously some, some odd sounds in there as well, but I was just wondering if you could get into that crapping itself, Billy Gibbons, you know, as it starts to fall over, and it does. Mm. It's, it's almost like a fuzz where it, it goes beyond the point of yeah. the gain that it can handle and all cr crushes into one another. I really like that. Yeah. I really, really Fantastic. like that. Fantastic. Not without good, it has a stellar reputation, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, people do love it and yeah. I can totally, totally see why. But I'm kind of surprised that, I mean, I know that it's supposed to be a mega modded, it's supposed to take its inspiration from all the tube screamers and everything, but can we make it sound like the 808? Let's have a go. Can we try that? Yep. <laughs>
Yes. <laughs> yeah. Certainly close there. enough. Yeah. Apologies, apologies to the comedy playing there. I was even bored. I was even bored of what I was playing. <laughs> um, yeah, near enough. Sounds great. Yeah, I'm still trying to struggle a little bit to to see how you would get from wanting a tube screamer to getting to that. Right. I think the idea is that every option or mod a tube screamer has ever yeah. had, or all the custom jobbies that have ever been released. Yeah. Apparently, it's all in there somewhere. Mm. And I suppose you've got because uh, you've got three sounds at your feet, haven't you? You've got on, gain B, yep, and, and then boost. And boost. So in that sense, I guess it is more versatile in a playing situation. Sure. Because there's no MIDI, is there? It's not like you can... No, 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 no. no. The, if the Tube Screamer is your thing, and that's the that sound, but you need, instead of having three different Tube Screamers, you could have that, you know, it's very good. It's very good. It's very extremely good. good. All right, the Clark style from Wampler. 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 I was talking to, well, we were in, in, at NAM, and we were talking to Brian Wampler. Oh, yeah. Hang on. Have we mentioned anyone else today? I don't think we have. I think we've been named up light mm. today. Which is. I was with Brad Paisley this week. <laughs> How is Brad? He's good, relevant, because he's a massive Tube Screamer fan, by the way. Okay. Yeah, anyway. So Who has a Wampler signature Tube Screamer type pedal? He does. Yeah. We have one. So it was relevant, I promise. Yeah. So talking to Brian, and he was saying that he was... He had this Tube Screamer that was the best sounding Tube Screamer he'd ever heard. And he's had loads of them. So he design this around this Tube Screamer. It's very cool, it's got a um, proper bass, middle and treble EQ, as opposed to just a sort of simple tone, and a big and a smooth switch. So, here you go. sound that's that sound you know what I really like about this it doesn't have a lot of these ones have got a crazy amount of gain yeah this just has that it's the gain is all in the sweet spot mm -hmm. so get some this really lovely pushed Nice. How does that compare with the maximum amount of gain in mine? Let's have a look. Because I think the Keeley mod puts a bit more gain in, or used to put a bit more right. gain in. That's good. At yeah. least as good, in fact. But uh, what you were saying about the gain, that is that is a facet of, certainly of traditional 808s. So they didn't have a huge amount of gain in. No. And that must have been quite the sort of um, willpower test. To keep it yeah. real. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Give us a bit of telly love. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Awesome. Someone had his cornflakes this morning. <laughs> it's actually, we are pushing the volume a little bit in here today. Um, Does sound good though. Yeah, again, sorry, I went through some ho ugly, horrible sounds completely on purpose because you will have never heard that EQ range out of any tube screamer, no. any Ibanez tube screamer anyway. Yeah. Which I guess brings us neatly on to the Green Rhino. I really like this pedal. Oh, by the way, the smooth switch and the big switch seem to be a similar sort of thing. More compressed yeah. in the smooth setting and less compressed. The big setting, that's where it's at. It's well yeah, it although, you know, something like a TS9 to me would sound more like the smooth. Smooth setting, okay. Yeah, 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 with that less compression and, um, uh, sorry, more compression in, in the way it drives. Yeah, but the big setting gives you a skank. Gives yeah. you, <laughs> yeah. it's great, love it. Yeah. The Green Rhino, way yeah. huge. George Trips. I started making old man noises when I bend down. It's like, Argh! So you bought camo shoes to compensate yeah, old man yeah, noise. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's totally a midlife thing, isn't it? Can we get rid of that? Lovely. Um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I've got a red motorcycle as well. It's just. Yeah, but that's a, that's, a, that's I'm just, just cool. I'm just I'm just full into the midlife thing. I'm older than you. Four by twelve. Four, Four by, by twelve. 12. Cab. <laughs> Motorbike. Kids' shoes. <laughs> I don't know. I'll probably buy like an ESP next or something. I would pay money to see you play an ESP. <laughs> it's never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> no offense to ESP players out the way. By the mm. way, Ron Wood plays one. Yeah. Um, Loads of oh. awesome people play them. Oh come on, brain. Oh, I like these. Yeah. No, I have heard some great <clears throat> tones from traditionally styled ESP guitars. And modern ones. What's wrong with modern ones, Dan? Nothing at all. I really like them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, there's some shovels outside. We're going to get them, bring them in. Yeah, no. Anyway. The Green Rhino. I thought you were going to do a seagull there. <laughs> He's coming for your pasty, mate. Um, have you ever been to St, if you've ever been to St Ives in Cornwall, and right. I would imagine other seaside places in the world, mm -hmm. you literally cannot eat a baked comestible of any kind. Dude. I had a sandwich, I sat down on the beach with the kids, and I was just about to get to eat the sandwich. Mouth was open, sandwich travelling towards my face. This seagull comes down and takes the whole thing out, but that's not even my best seagull story! <laughs> right? I'm, I'm going to provide some background uh, guitar playing for Daniel telling this story. <laughs> that's the sea, by the way. <laughs> Men. Manly Beach, right? Manly Beach. Oh, it's in, in Australia. In Australia. They've got this... <laughs> they speak Australian now. They've got this, this... The Corsa on Manly Beach, they've got all these shops and there was a... Um, I'm just... I'm doing... <laughs> sorry! Well, I'm you're, putting, doing, you're doing... Okay, sorry. You're doing in, sound effects, got it. We're in there. We're in there. So, they've got the Corso and there's all these uh, fish and chip shops and things and they've got this kebab shop with one of those turning... Yeah, right. Those big turning things of meat. This seagull flew in and attached us to the kebab thing. It was going, I tried to rip the meat off. 
The guy comes out screaming. He gets the seagull out. Brushes <laughs> down the No, no. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, it was funny. Fact that seagull must have been looking at that thing for weeks, thinking, yeah, "I'm gonna do it." Uh, it's I'm an gonna do it. Leg, here, yeah. here we go. Here we go. All his mates are going, "Go on, go, go on. on, you can do it. Yeah, yeah. You can do it." Okay. Oh, so funny. The seagulls of the world. We salute you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Anyway, so from seagulls to elephants to rhinoceri. <laughs> rhinoceri. Is that it? Rhinoceros? No, I, think it's, I think it's rhinoceros. Rhino. Rhinoceros is Rhino. Oh, heavens, we've descended. Um, okay, the green rhino. We first heard, because this is one half of the camel toe, right? Yeah. Which we had in the show a little while ago. Yeah. Sounded awesome. Camels. And what I... It's <laughs> not anything like a camel. That did actually sound like a seagull. Um... What I loved about this was the extra EQ setting. So with the, in classic mode, you have your, your volume, drive and tone as you would on a normal tube screamer. And you they're would. dialed out, aren't they? So the, 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 the two other little mini pots don't work. Basically, yeah, it disconnects these. Yep. Okay, so if you. Great. Yeah, very nice. Now, if we switch in the extra uh, EQ control. good is that I, I'm gonna re I'm gonna reveal the secret to better tone okay louder and more bass okay isn't it when you're listening to a guitar sound in isolation if you want to make it better if you want to make it sound better turn it up and add the bass I'm not saying in any way that that's a it's not a good strategy, not a good for, a strategy band. for a band no at all yeah at all but With, yeah it, uh, the that reason, sounds uh, awesome because it's had more bottom end. Yeah, and exactly. And you go, oh, there's all that bottom end there. That's completely brilliant. And then you then, get into the band and you can't hear it. That's right. Yeah. But really cool because, again, it addresses those. It addresses that main problem that a lot of people find with tube screamers. If you don't like a tube screamer, uh, A, buy another pedal. But if you really must carry on with it, finding a tube screamer that you do like, then putting a bit of bottom end in there is a, yeah. is a big deal. Definitely. No, and then the other one... Superb is the other important frequency. You've got, it? yeah, so it's 100 hertz and 500. So if this, is, uh, this is the 100 hertz. And this is 500. It's the key, it's the mid hump. Yep. On Bonamassa's overrated special, he's got that, wasn't he? I think, I don't know if it's exactly 500 hertz, but he's got that tweakable frequency. Right. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Yeah. Now we have, and I must admit, I didn't know this was based on the tube screen with the Keely Red Dirt. I, th I think I'm right in saying, and if we're wrong, please put us right, but I think I'm right in saying that, so, oh, so, Right where we came in was um, talking about the way Robert Keeley used to modify Tube Screamers, blah, blah, blah. And then over the years, obviously, he's learned a tremendous amount, and the Keeley team have learned a tremendous amount about that particular circuit and mm. all the mods they can make. And as far as I was aware, the Red Dirt is the sort of 
at that point when it came out was the culmination of that learning. So you were getting everything in, in one pedal. I think I think I'm right in yeah. saying that. Well, from what I've read, it, it, I don't think he comes out and says it. Yeah. But a lot of reviews on that say yes. This is basically yeah. what this is. So let's have a listen. <laughs> We didn't hear the telly through the green rhino, you know. I can make that happen. It's really nice. It's really I'm grimacing nice. a bit because it's quite loud in here today and that high end is, there's a lot of it. There's a lot of it. Right, Red Dirt. Sorry, someone commented on the video says, I love that look that Mick gives you when you play something that's rubbish. And I'm like, oh really? I haven't noticed it before. And I'm like, there it is! <laughs> it's not it's not rubbish. It's not rubbish. It's just there comes a point, you know, where we're like ready to move on. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just as guilty. I'm just as guilty. Um I like it. Same thing with that switch, isn't it? Yes. Um softer, harder. Mm -hmm. Uh let's let me just have a quick go yep. and then we'll compare it to the 808. Yep. So good. 
Were you swipping, flipping between the two yep. there? No way. Yep. Uh, indistinguishable from where I was sat. Mm. So amazing. I think I think we can comfortably say, despite our initial unsuredness, that it's pretty really? tube screamer like. Yeah. Yeah, cool. And there's a mini version of that as well. Oh, is there? Yeah. Oh, heavens. Which, if it's anything like uh, the Ibanez mini tube screamer, which was in video one, by the way, mm. it was pretty much our favourite of the lot, wasn't it, on the mm. day, as I remember? Yeah. It was fascinating because yours on the on the day there was still something about yours that was that was great. In this context, th there is a number of them. They're so actually. I reckon the only one that I struggled to get sounding like the tube screamer is like your tube screamer. Unfortunately, is the Moor. Oh God! Can I say that? Oh, you're so snobby, man. All you do is give you really expensive pedals and... Okay, let me show you. Let's try again. Yeah. Let's try Listen again. I'll play. Yeah. What shall I play? Um... Moments there where it was sounding pretty good, I thought. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Um, it definitely has more of the um, dry. It definitely has more of the dry. There's a clarity to your one that's really special. Um, but I mean, you know, for that money, it's amazing. What are they? Seven or eight pence? Yeah. Something like that. Plus tax. Yeah. Nine pence. No, actually, they're not that cheap, are they? I think they're 60 quid or something. Yeah. There are cheaper ones. Quid. There, are, there are much cheaper ones out there now. Yeah. Um, but, the you know, to be fair, it sounded better the second time through. Yeah. Um, just shows then if you just keep tweaking, keep tweaking. Uh, so, mine's out of the equation. You can't have that. Which one are you having? It's, it's the Moonshine or the Red Dirt. Yeah. It's between those two for me. And I like the tweakability of the of the Green Rhino, and mm. actually the Clarksdale sounds awesome as well. Yeah, it's it's really there's nothing there that you couldn't get a really good sound out of. No, the Palisades is clearly for the tweakers. Yeah, and I I would imagine would be an awesome thing if you do a lot of recording. Yes, definitely. And if you needed lots of, you know, you didn't want to be continually grabbing out different overdrive pedals, you wanted something that you know that you could just use. One of the things for me is that. When I hear you play in that tube screamer, it's like, well, that's the sound. That is the sound. So having something with a lot of knobs instantly tells me, no, I just, I want the th three knobs yeah. set up like mix. I just want that sound. So yeah. I think that they, which is why the Red Dirt and the JHS sort of appeal to me straight away because with very little tweaking. Yep. And, and even like the, um, the Red Dirt, it's set. You know, yeah, actually, it's set, twelve o'clock. Set very similar. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we there's a danger of getting into sort of hippie territory, but we touch on it every now and again by saying that quite often there'll be a comment that says, "Oh God, you've got all those lovely 
tube amps or not just us but anybody you've got lovely tube amps why why on earth do you need to put a pedal that costs about eight pence to build in front of it which has no valves in it and all the rest of it but to me that 808 my 808 mm. is as much an instrument as this sure or that yeah and it's the interaction of those things and yes. that made that's going to be different for every single person out there and what i like about all these is they probably tick the boxes mm. depending on what your particular approach is yep yeah there's not there's not a duff one in the bunch no very cool no I, I i mean i would conclude by saying i would happily put any single one of those on my pedal board or you know use it instead of that 808 and get a sound that i'd be very happy with sure yeah it's a great way to end i think which you know is a very convenient conclusion isn't it <laughs> okay guys i hope you enjoyed that it's been uh it's been a fun fun day today it's been emotional it has it yeah. has I just want to finish by saying a massive thank you to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and uh, grab one of our t-shirts. Um, also to our uh, preferred retailers, which in the UK is Anderson's Music and in the USA is Rift City Music. And we have a new exclusive preferred retailer in Australia, which is Pedal Empire. Matt, who is in which town, Dan? In Brisbane. In Brisbane. Oh, yes. That's where you come from. That's where I come from originally. Yeah, no yeah. nepotism whatsoever there. Um, hey, Matt, if you're watching, great to have you on board. So, yes, if you're buying pedals in Australia, please go and see Matt. He's awesome. Yes. What a dude. Yeah. And also a massive thank you to our patrons. Yes. Our Patreon. Patrons. We have some very special stuff coming up for you guys very soon. Is there a tequila called Patron? I don't know. Or is that Padron? Be. Yeah, I mean, if you want to send us any of that, that would be great too. But you know. <laughs> Converse, uh, Padron, is it Padron? I'm sure it's Padron. Okay. That would be nice. Be good. Sounds and then good. we could do the tequila show. That tequila show? <laughs> yeah. There's a joke there, but it's potentially xenophobic, so I'm not going to say. Uh, tell <laughs> it. Right. Um, we hope you enjoyed that. Cheers, guys. Thanks so much. See you next week. Goodbye. Bye.